Hello and welcome to the Grandfather's Cave. In this video, we are going to explore customization of the Dungeons and Dragons game. We are starting with ability scores and character creation. The final product of this customization process is going to be a D&D clone all of its own, called the Avern Fantasy RPG. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the future videos where we delve deeper into the other aspects of this game. Let's roll initiative and let's get started. You will find a link to all the rules described herein in the description of this video, and additional rules will be made available in future videos. Creating characters is at the heart of every role-playing game. It's where your imagination meets the rules of the game. With our upcoming chapter, you'll be ready to start creating your unique fantasy hero. But before we dive in, remember that character creation is about more than figuring out a character's name, age, and regional background. Your character's backstory can be as detailed or as general as you wish, and both approaches have their advantages and disadvantages. It is also essential that your character background answers important questions like where they come from, why they are on the path of adventure, and who or what they care about. What is your character ready to die for, or use a wish spell for? Such questions are the building blocks of your character's story and personality. In order to keep things simple, I've chosen to use a single table for ability scores and modifiers, a practice that has been a standard in Dungeons and Dragons since the third edition. However, while these later D&D editions feature straightforward ability scores, they also intensified the gradual increase of ability scores that began with AD&D. In the Avent system, we use a single table for all ability scores, but with a somewhat slower progression. This means that ability scores from 9 to 12 provide no modifier. This shifts attention and power away from the ability score modifiers and makes player choices such as class features and feats more important. Additionally, there are no automatic ability score increases tied to character level, as seen in those later D&D editions, which puts a halt to the ability score inflation. Lastly, Avon rules include 7 rather than just 6 ability scores, making it more challenging to maintain consistently high scores. Now let's delve into the concept of ability scores in the Avon system. We've retained the traditional 6 abilities that are characteristic of all previous D&D and Pathfinder editions. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. However, Charisma has been renamed Presence, and in the Avon rules, we introduce a seventh ability, Luck. This Luck attribute brings the idea of luck into the game as a quantifiable aspect. It's something that players can influence not only during character creation, but also through gameplay. I'll provide more details about how luck works later in this video, but for a deeper understanding of its impact on the game, I encourage you to check out some of the upcoming videos on Fate, Combat, and Dying. We determine the ability scores by rolling 4d6, discarding the lowest die for each individual ability. This means you will roll a total of 7 times in a fixed order. Once you have these scores, you can choose to swap the scores for any two abilities once. Here's something special. Upon character creation, every player character gains a plus 2 elective ability score bonus, on top of any racial modifiers. This bonus can be applied to the ability score of your choice, except for any ability score that already has a racial ability modifier. But for those who want to start at level 0, here's an option for you. Zero level characters have a minus 2 penalty to all ability scores, and they don't get the plus 2 elective ability bonus until they reach level 1. Zero level characters also start with 1d4 health slash stamina points. To calculate this, roll a d4, round up the result divided by 2 for health points, and round down for stamina points. They gain a craft or profession proficiency of their choice, an appropriate outfit, and 60 10 copper pieces. Upon gaining 30 experience points, a zero level character can advance to level 1. At first level, a zero level character increases all ability scores by plus 2, gains all racial features of their chosen race, and receives the plus 2 elective ability bonus. They keep both health and stamina points, as well as proficiencies that they gained at level 0. Now let's delve into the specific of each ability score. Strength is the measure of your character's raw muscle power and the ability to leverage physical force. It affects melee attack rolls, damage rolls with melee and thrown weapons, and even how much a character can carry. When wielding a melee weapon in two hands, you add one and a half times your strength modifier to damage rolls. It's also crucial for ability and skill checks related to physical strength. For instance, athletic skill often relies on strength. Strength combined with constitution determines your character's encumbrance and carry capacity. Dexterity represents your character's nimbleness, fine motor skills, and hand-eye coordination. 
It modifies your armor class, reflex saving throws, and ranged attack rolls. It's crucial for skills like acrobatics, stealth, and thiefcraft. Constitution reflects your character's health and endurance. It affects your character's stamina and how long you can stay in the fight. Your constitution modifier is added to your stamina points for each level you gain. In general, only player characters have stamina points. Constitution is also vital for avoiding fatigue in combat. Intelligence measures your character's logical and analytical capacity. It influences the power of a wizard's spells and the number of languages your character can learn. Intelligence is tied to skills like arcana, craft, culture, engineering, mysticism, and nature. Wisdom represents your character's intuition, general awareness, and common sense. It affects clerical spellcasting and is tied to skills like healing, perception, profession, and survival. Presence replaces the old charisma ability. The reason for this name change is to underscore that presence has nothing to do with attractiveness. Presence reflects your character's force of personality and willpower. It affects how creatures and people react to your social interactions and modifies your will saving throws. It's not about commonness, it's about the strength of your character's personality. Presence is tied to skills like mercantile, perform, and social. Last but not least, we have luck. It measures your character's good and bad fortune. Luck isn't tied to a specific skill, but it comes into play in situations where luck plays a significant role. It might be used for checks like noting something without actively searching or avoiding sudden hazards while unaware of the danger. Before we wrap up this chapter, I want to let you know that this video is part of a series. In a previous video, we discussed customizing rules for RPGs, and in the next video, we'll delve into character races. So make sure to watch those videos for a complete understanding of this new RPG system, which I call the Avent Rule System. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share it with other role players. Let me know your approach to character creation in the comments below. And until next time, keep slaying.